Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now I am going to explain how we can create the sample path of the Poisson process using the MATLAB code. So, since I said uh, the Poisson process is uh, related with the inter arrival times or exponential distribution. So, I can start with uh, the time 0 there is no customer in the system and I can go for what is the maximum time I need the sample path. Then I can keep on create the random variables from the random variable I can generate uh, the exponentially distributed the time event. Then I can shift the time event by t of i plus 1 by adding the next exponentially distributed time event, then I can go for plotting the sample path. So, this is the one sample path in which over the time from 0 to 10, the number of arrivals occurs in the interval 0 to time 0 to 10 in the form of that means uh, there is a one arrival occurs at this time. Therefore, the n of t values is incremented by 1 and it is taking the same value and uh, when at the second arrival occurs then the increment is taken by 2 and so on. So, and if you see carefully the sample path you can find out the increment is always by 1 over the time and there is no 2 arrival or more than 1 arrival in a very small interval of time and uh, you can come you can able to see the inter arrival time that is going to be a exponentially distributed with the parameter lambda whatever the lambda I have chosen in this uh, sample path. So, this is the way the sample path of uh, the Poisson process look like. Now, we are going to discuss the third type of stochastic process that is a simple random walk. So, how we can create the simple random walk? Let me explain. You have a probability space. you have a probability space. From the given probability space, you define a sequence of random variable x size and those random variables are integer valued random variables. Each x size are integer valued random variable. Not only that, all the x size are IAD random variables also all the x i's are i a d random variables and each one is a integer valued discrete type random variable. As a special case, as a special case, I can go for the random variable x i takes a value 1 or minus 1 with the probability p and 1 minus p. This is a special type of random work. In general, I am going to define the in general random work also. As a special case, I will go for the random variable x i takes the value 1 with the probability p and uh, x i takes the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p, where uh, the p can take the value 0 to 1. Now, I am going to define the random variable s n that is nothing but sum of x i's, sum of first n x i's that is going to form a, the random variable s n and the, ran, the stochastic process s n or the stochastic sequence s n for different values of n, this will form a simple random walk. The s n is going to form a simple random walk why it is simple? Because it is going to take a integer valued random variable and each values are going to take each random variable is going to take the value 1 or minus 1. Therefore, this is going to be called it as a simple random work. In general, in general the k can take the any integers accordingly you, you land up a having a yes sense are going to be a random work and I am going to give the another special case when p is equal to half that means uh, each x i random variable takes a value 1 with the probability of or minus 1 with the probability of then that random work is going to be called it as a symmetric random work. Why it is symmetric? Because with the probability of it takes a forward one step 
or with the probability of it takes a backward one step. Therefore, that type of a random work is called a symmetric random work. In general, if it takes a value 1 or minus 1, then it is called a simple random walk. If a k can take any integers, then it is going to be called as a generalized random walk. So, this, is, this random walk can be created in a simple example of two persons coin toising game also. this simple uh, random walk can be explained by the example two persons a coin tossing example in which uh, you have a person A and B if uh, at the end of the coin tossing if he is going to head uh, then he is going to win rupees 1 or uh, if he is go at the end of the uh, nth coin tossing if it is going to get the tail then he is going to be loose in this game, if A wins, then B gives rupees 1 to A and if A loses, then A gives rupees 1 to B. So, accordingly, I can go for creating a random variable x n or x i for i is equal to 1, 2 and so on. Therefore, x i denotes what is the amount of the person A earning at the ith game. Similarly, we can construct a stochastic process for player B and calculate the measures of interest. I can go for uh, creating a random variable S n is nothing but summation of x i's where i is equal to 1 to n. Therefore, the S n denotes what is the amount earned by the person A at the end of n at the game. That is what is the total amount. So, the x i denotes uh, how much he is going to earn at the end of each game, whereas the S n is going to be the total amount earned by the person A at the end of uh, first n games. Therefore, this S n is going to form a simple random walk, where x i's are going to take an integer valued with the value 1 and minus 1 with the probability p it is going to take the it is going to take the value 1 or it is going to take the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p. So, I am just relating the simple random walk with the simple scenario of a two persons a coin toising game. If you see the sample path of the S n First, I can go for what is the sample path of each x size. Each x size can take the value 1 or minus 1. Therefore, it is going to take the value 1 or minus 1. Therefore, if uh, x 1 takes the value 1, it is 1. If uh, x 2 takes the value minus 1, it is uh, like this. If uh, x 2 takes the value minus x 3 takes the value minus 1, then it is here. If uh, uh, x 4 takes the value 1, then it is like this. So, this is a sample path of x i over the i. The way I have given the x i's, now I can go for, sorry, now I can go for writing what is the possible values of n and what is the possible values of s n. So, since uh, x 1 is equal to 1, therefore, s 1 is going to be 1 and uh, x 2 is going to be minus 1, therefore, it takes a value 1 plus minus 1, therefore, it is going to be 0 and uh, x 2 is going to be minus 1, therefore, s 2 is x 3, s 3 is going to be minus 1 and uh, x 4 is going to be 1, therefore, it is going to be again 0. So, this is the way the sample path goes over the n. So, this is the one sample path for the possible values of x i takes a value 1 and minus 1. Accordingly, I have drawn the sample path of s n over the n. Since uh, x i's are going to take the value 1 and minus 1 
and with the probability p and uh, with the probability 1 minus p it takes a value minus 1, I can go for finding out what is the expectation of x i. That is nothing but uh, x i is equal to p plus uh, minus 1 times 1 minus uh, p. Therefore, this is nothing but uh, 2 p minus 1. So, when I go for discussing the symmetric random walk, when the p is equal to off, then the expectation of each x i is going to be 0 and also I can able to find out what is a e of x i squares that is going to be 1. Not only that, when p is equal to off, I can able to find out what is the expectation of a s n that is going to be 0 and the variance of a s n is going to be n and I can go for writing what is the expectation of s n by root n power n power 2 that is going to be 1. So, the way I have uh, got the result for uh, expectation of uh, s yes, uh, expectation of x size and the expectation of uh, s n I can go for what is the limiting distribution of s n. So, using central limit theorem, I know what is the mean for uh, each s n and I know what is the variance of each s n also. Therefore, using a CLT, I can able to conclude s n divided by square root of n minus the mean of this random variable is 0 divided by the standard deviation is going to be 1 and this as a n tends to infinity, this will be a standard normal distribution where z is going to be a standard normal distribution as a n tends to infinity and this convergence is via distribution. That means, I can able to conclude the distribution of s n by square root of n as n tends to infinity in distribution, this sequence of random variable will converges to the standard normal in distribution. I can go for creating what is a sample path of uh, the simple uh, random walk uh, by using the MATLAB code. So, for that I have to fix what is the initial position and uh, what is the maximum number of uh, steps I would like to go for finding the sample path and what is the probability of uh, success in uh, each uh, for uh, what is a forward move probability. Accordingly, it is going to take the value 1 with the probability p and it is going to take the value minus 1 with the probability 1 minus p. So, I am giving the value of p only and then I am just going for the possible values of s n by adding the 1 or minus 1 accordingly I am just writing the sample path of s size. So, if you see the sample path over the time 0 to 20 and each x i are going to take the value 1 or minus 1. Accordingly, the s n is going to take the same value or incremented by 1 or decremented by minus 1 according to the values of x i. Therefore, this is going to be the one sample path which is depicted using the MATLAB code. So, this is the earlier I have shown the same graph, this is the s n as n tends to infinity. Here you can see the different sample path for as n tends to infinity, you can find out what is the distribution of a s n divided by square root of n as n, ten, as n tends to infinity also. And this figures, it has a three different sample path and one can observe what is the amount of a person a have as n tends to infinity that depends on whether it is he is going to take the positive value or he is going to have the negative value depends on the first few games that you can be observed from this diagram. The first few the first few uh, results whether he is going to gain by 1 rupee or he is going to lose by 1 rupee accordingly the possible values of s n will go as n tends to infinity. Now, we are going to discuss the fourth uh, simple stochastic process that comes in the population model. Now, we will see the fourth simple stochastic process arises in the population model. You consider a population of uh, tigers in India 
So, that is going to be a for over the time this is going to be form a stochastic process. So, I am going to make the assumption at the end of its lifetime it produces a random amount random number x of offspring with the probability mass function that is the probability of x takes the value k that is a k where it satisfies us a k's are going to be greater than or equal to 0 and the summation is going to be 1. And also I am making the assumption all the offsprings act independently of each other and at the end of their lifetime individually can have a pregnancy accordance with the probability mass function the same uh, probability of x i z takes the value k. With this uh, S n with this uh, S n will form a discrete uh, time and a discrete state stochastic process where S n is the population size of a tiger at the end of nth generation. And if you see the sample path of S n over the different generation suppose you make it S naught is equal to 0 and suppose you make it S 1 is equal to X 1 and suppose X 1 takes the value 3 and then the second generation S 2 is going to be X 1 plus X 2 plus X 3 and suppose you make it X 1 takes the value 3 and X 2 takes the value 0 and X 3 takes the value 1 then we have a S 2 is going to take the value 4. So, if you see the sample path of S n over the n, it is going to take the value 1, then it is going to take the value 3, then it is going to take the value 4 and so on. And this is a sample path of the population size of a tiger over the nth generation and this is going to form a discrete time, discrete state stochastic process. And there is another stochastic process Gaussian process that I will discuss in the later lectures. And uh, in this lecture, we have covered uh, the arrival process of the two type, one is a discrete time and the another is a continuous time arrival process. And we have also discussed the random walk and we have discussed a simple stochastic process arises in the population model and the Gaussian process that I will discuss later. And the references books are much. So, with this uh, I will complete the model 2 of uh, definition and the simple stochastic processes. Thank you.